welcome to another spoiler review. I want to go over this first season of You. You, not you, but you. It's starring Joe. Not my Joe. Their Joe. That's right. Not your Joe. Their Joe. That's right. There's a lot of Jews out there, but there's this one Joe that this show is starring. It's all about this guy named Joe. And uh, I want to walk you through this show. It has this uh, bad, bad, um, not a bad five. I wanted to say Breaking Bad Five. I want to show you what I mean by that. It starts off in New York City. A girl walks into a bookstore. He is the owner of the bookstore. It's Joe. The girl is Beck. They start to have conversations. The show has a uh, a narrator. It's narrated by Joe most of the time. There's a few moments that is narrated by her. Most of it's narrated by him from his perspective. And it kind of reminds me of Resident Alien. That also has an, a narrator that's narrated by the star, the alien guy in Resident Alien. And I do like narrators in a show. And it looks like this is based on a... Um, on a novel or something, a book, a series of books, and a lot of a lot of shows and movies seem to be pretty good when they're when they're based on something like that. Like it seems like there could be a really good writing. Joe has this guy working for him. Joe lives in an apartment. His neighbor is this boy, but the boy is in a tough situation because his mom has a, a a bad relationship with the with this other guy who's like a like a PI or something and and he's always like yelling at her and probably hitting her too and and he's not happy about it but Joe gives him books to read sometimes Joe gives him a little bit of money so that he can do some errands for Joe. And uh, and he's happy about that. But then that guy is not. I can't believe it's not butter. I mean, mayonnaise. Yeah, Joe doesn't got a lot in there. So Joe goes and he tries to Google the girl back. And he's just trying to figure out what kind of person she is. And... He starts to become a stalker. You know, that kind of makes me think about a lot of things. A lot of things. Uh, from my own life especially. You know, I think about this stuff, you know, like, am I a stalker? And look at me, like, who am I to all this? You know, I think about all of some, you know, some of the stuff or all of the stuff that I've done in my life. And some of the things that people have accused me of doing allegedly, like... Ooh, oatmeal, oatmeal, oatmeal's a stock, and all this kind of stuff, and, um, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, the things you do for love, that's one of the things Joe says in the show, the things you do for love, or something, something to that effect, he said that to the boy, and, uh, that's the thing that one of the guys said in the season one of Game of Thrones, as he pushed um, he pushed a boy right out a window, and he became, um, unable, <coughs> oh my, <clears throat> excuse me, but seriously, like, he was, he became unable to walk, but then in the end, he became, like, the ruler of everything in season eight of Game of Thrones, that boy, remember that boy, not the other guy, Haldar. Hold or hold your Bitcoin. Hold the door. But the boy. He got pushed out of the window. By that guy. Who was the one of his sister. In Game of Thrones. And he was like the things you do for love. And Joe was kind of like. Saying something like that too. And it makes you just. makes you wonder. What all the things I think about. The people. The people in my life. And I, I try to tell you. 
Please don't do that combo. Beck is on the tracks of a subway. Joe saves Beck and takes her phone. She doesn't know that until later on. She finds out and she's not happy about it. But he's thinking, you know, he needs to he needs to stalk her a little bit more. This is kind of like a uh, Superman Lois Lane moment, except it's a little bit one-sided. I mean, it's kind of deceptive. He was being deceptive. And so it begs the question of, is this psychotic? Is this, like, over the line? And it probably is. I can somewhat understand what what he was thinking, what he was trying to do. Because I've been there. I've been there kind of thing. Like with some of the things I've done in my life. Up and down. Through my life. I mean I've gone through ups and downs. Through. I mean. I'm, I'm, I mean like. I think about like. What I've done like. Good and bad. And a little bit of both all the time. It's not just good or bad. It's like good and bad. But it's like. Sometimes you're trying to. You're trying to help people. You're trying to do something good. You got the good intention, but is it good? And sometimes if you're trying too hard, you're trying too quickly, it can it could backfire. It could backfire. It could it could I don't know. It could there's so many things, but I I find the stories in my life to be very intriguing worth telling that's why I try to tell my stories all the time especially those 10,000 plus videos of mine that had a lot of stories in them which YouTube stole they destroyed so many of those videos I mean all of them I mean which I don't really have copies of Many of them over like over forty channels on YouTube, like many of them destroyed or locked or something or suspended. It devastated me at least I'm not dead, unlike some of the people that Joe ends up killing spoiler alert, and so it begs the question, and the boy asked like. You know, is it good or is it bad? Because he ends up killing a guy later on. And Joe's like, uh, it's okay. I mean, it's bad, but it's like, it's okay because of love. Which is not entirely true, but it's kind of true in, in a way. I would argue um, there is some truth buried underneath all that. But it's very badly um, abused, uh, weaponized kind of thing. It's crazy, I tell you. It's crazy. Uh, you really do want to stand on top of principles that will ground you. And you don't want to be psychotic. You don't want to let your emotions run you. But... But, you know, emotions run you a lot, most of the time, whether you know it or not, whether you, whether you think about it or not, emotions are running deep in your, in your blood, in your vein. I kind of use emotions as a, as a, uh, a weapon, as a tool, um, in order to, in order to uh, to be a little persuasive and uh, you know influential, educational, entertaining, I believe there's there's value in in uh, being a little bit uh, controversial and a little bit um, just you know uh, provoking. Uh, I want to be educational. I want to be inspirational. I want to be a lot of different things at at different times, right or wrong, good or bad. I may not be 
really good at what I do, what I try to do, all the different things, but I try to do stuff. And so I'm, I'm, I'm always like, I'm looking at Joe and I'm just thinking about what he's doing in the show. And I'm about to go and try to watch season two after this. I haven't seen it yet, but um, don't tell me. <laughs> I wanted to make this before I moved on, but I have a lot of thoughts. And I could probably make this video a lot longer talking about each episode. I'm, I'm going to try to go quickly through uh, the 10 episodes of this season. Beck has this boyfriend dude, but he might have uh, killed some people. Episode two, he's locked in the, the basement uh, uh, of the bookstore. Joe is interrogating him and trying to figure things out. And eventually he just ends up killing him. It might have been accidental. He had like a, a peanut allergy. There is Beck and her friend. And and she has she has these a uh, group of friends that she's always hanging out with for better or for worse. And then they end up kissing probably for the first time. Episode three. This girl's trying to encourage Beck. But she was also deeply in love with Back and they knew each other for a very long time since they were like little girls or or something and so she just wants to or maybe not that long I, I forget exactly how long but they're really close and she just wants to be with her like she's a lesbian and uh but she hasn't told her that but she, she just wants to be close with her and then she ends up going home with this guy a bartender with glasses, sort of look like Clark Kent, Superman. And, uh, he's out there just looking, spying, being a peepee. Tom, tell me you don't like that. It's a good question. Do you ever spy on people? Do I ever spy on people? A lot of people spy on a lot of people. And so, because he had crazy sex, she ended up breaking up bad. She had, she needed a new bed, and he knew that because he was spying on her, and he's he like texts her because he also has her phone. She has a new phone, but all the all the text messages goes to the old phone too because it's like a clone phone, and so he knows exactly who's texting her, and she's re he like he he's just keeping track of everything. That's going on in her life, and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to the store. You wanna, hey, you wanna go to the store with me?" And she's like, "Wow, you read my mind. Actually, you just read my phone." But she doesn't know that yet. And so they go and they, they uh, they get a bed, and he's like, not happy about it. I mean, because it took her a while to pick a bed, and he's like, "It doesn't really matter. They're all the same." And then he tried to make it out with her again. She didn't really want to do that. She didn't really want to do that in public. And then he he wasn't happy with himself. He's like, wow, I didn't read that situation very well. This guy's like, Joe's a crazy guy. You got to believe me. And Joe's like, no, I'm just planting a garden. Hey, Beck, you got to love me. Episode four is called The Captain. And Joe's like, who's the captain? It turns out it was just her father. But she didn't want anybody to know about that. Which makes you wonder what's going to happen in season two. Yeah. They didn't have a really good relationship. Uh, something happened. Uh, I don't know uh, what happened to her mom. And now... Yeah, something happened to her father. He he was addicted to, to, uh, to drugs and or something. And then... Something happened to his brain, and, and then he had to go to the hospital, and he came back. Like, he had a stroke or something, and he came back a different person. And so he doesn't remember things that they did when she was a little girl, and she's not happy about that. And there's Joe. Joe has uh, dinner with them. Uh, and uh, there she is, and there's the captain. It's It's her father. Hey, Joe, they say 
girls with daddy issues are really good in bed. And then they start making out. And then Joe's like, are you spying on me? Which is kind of ironic because he does that to her. And was But but uh, she doesn't know that yet. But there's the irony. And there's a little bit of uh, some romance in this show. Some kind of chick flick. There's, um, you know, there's drama. It's some kind of thriller for the most part. And, uh, it's not just a romance. I mean, it's like, it's a lot darker, which makes this show pretty unique because of all, all the different components that it has. It's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit funny. So there's some comedy. For a while, they're living with each other. And it's almost like nothing could go wrong at all. For the longest time, it seems that everything was happily ever after. That they were living pretty pretty well off with each other and they had a routine. But this girl wasn't happy about it. She was able to set her up with this guy who's like a famous writer or publisher. But actually, he doesn't like her. And just wants to sleep with Beck. Later on, they, they go to to her house, Beck is uh, horrified in a sense. She thinks that maybe her best friend is going to die, but really it was a setup because, you know, she wanted Beck to come over because, he, you know, she's in love with her, so she's willing to, to uh, stage her own alleged suicide. Joe! Joe, you don't understand. When C needs me, C needs me. This wasn't the first time C almost killed herself. Beck, don't you understand? She's doing this because she's just trying to get your attention. No, Joe. Ooh, episode six. Here's an old friend who knew about Joe and his previous girlfriend, Candace. He got a fat lip, kind of like my fat lip. He got punched by the the neighbor guy. Uh, Beck went off with the girl because the girl's in love with Beck. He's running off to try to find them and spy on them. And then he got pulled over and he had to, he had to like pretend to be like a rich person who has a yacht, kind of like Roy Merrick. And he's like, oh yeah, that's cool, okay, uh, no problem, you can go away, I'm not going to run your license, I'll try to figure out who you are. Beck is there, they bring this doctor guy over so they can have a threesome, but Beck didn't want it, so it was just a regular twosome, while Joe was under the bed. While she, you know, while Joe's under the bed, he looks, he thinks... You know, it should be back, but it's actually Candace. It's not really Candace. Candace is not there. So there's a question at, at that time, you know, what happened to Candace? And so it's like he's having, like, illusions. Like, like he's see, kind of, like, seeing things inside his head. Like, Candace is still in his brain. Sort of like me and all the people that inside my brain, you know, uh... So it's kind of like in Battlestar Galactica, one of the guys, like, there was a girl inside his brain. He kept on seeing her, even though she wasn't there, the blonde. Girl, I love Joe. Good God. Beck, you know, you knew, you, you've only known Joe for like five seconds. Good God. This is the part where she found out, she found out Joe was there. She pulls out her gun. She's gonna like shoot Joe. And he, he gets shot. He has to run. He passed out earlier while he was there and he tries to get away. He uh peed in a um in a bottle. He's running away. There she is. She is kinda hot as a I don't know, an Asian or whatever she has. She looks like an Asian. I'd like to show her a whole new world, if you know what I mean. 
I'll rock her socks off. I wish I could rock more off. I said that about Shannon Bailey. I'm going to never say it again because, you know, she doesn't want anybody to know about that because it's like, why would you say that? And I say that about everybody, actually. Do I? I don't know. Do I? There she is, and he's down there, and he's like, okay, and and then he's able to grab the gun, and boom, and fire, and so it was over, and then he has to get away, and and there's the cop guy, and, and they're gonna try to figure out, they're trying to figure out, you know, who who killed her, but um, the story, the cover story is, uh, it was a, it was a suicide, even though it wasn't really a suicide, but I guess he made it look like it was a suicide. Episode 7, Everything is Sip, and that's the word they, they made up, and Beck and Joe are like, uh, they're playing Scrabble, and they're making up words, and it's really kind of cool, some people like people here, by the way, it's like, they do that, a lot of people like to make up words, and be a little kinky like that. I don't know how many feet fetish, but, you know, I do have leg fetishes. But I'm not going to say that. Never, ever make a video about that. Or even say it in a video. This girl's kind of hot. And she's, like, trying to give him advice. And, and she, she said, Beck wants a big birthday party. It ends up being not true. Well, I say partly true. It's just normally, like, in the past, Beck was with other people other guys, other boyfriends, and then things wouldn't work out or whatever, and then for her birthday, she would always end up with that other girl who Joe killed. So now, now that she's gone, Beck doesn't know what to do and wasn't happy that Joe threw her a big birthday party at his bookstore. Meanwhile, they're both seeing a therapist, the same therapist, by the way, it's it's Jesse from Full House. And they're both talking about each other, but Beck ends up having an affair with him. And uh, he finds out, and he was going to kill him, but he, then he doesn't later on. But um, while he's, while Joe is there talking to this therapist, He's using an analogy by pretending that he's gay. And he's like, every time I'm with Bob, and Bob does this, and Bob does that, and and Jesse's all good with his uh, his analogies, and, and, oh, it's like, it seems like there's a mouse in your house, and you want to play with the mouse, or you don't want to play with the mouse, and, and they go back and forth, and, and then later on they're like, oh, we're back together. I mean, I'm playing with the mouse again. And, and he's like, but, but I thought, I thought everything was over. I thought you wanted to get rid of the mouse. The moles. Beck breaks up with Joe at the park because he realized that that he was spying on her and she didn't like it. So at that time, he gets with his neighbor, this girl, this hot black chick. And, you know, earlier she was hitting on him with that um, cake uh, birthday cake that had the uh, the word every everything ship on the cake. Uh, the top of the cake looked like a Scrabble board, so it was very romantic. And this black chick, Cynthia, saw it. She's like, "Don't call me Sarah Clayton." I know they don't say that, so they sleep with each other. And I promise not to say that. I try to mumble every every time I try to, you know, it's like they have a good time but you know this is Karen by the way and she's a clean freak alright you know what I think about clean freaks you know I actually am sort of sort of am a clean freak if you know what I mean I'm a, I'm a wannabe like perfectionist clean freak etc even though I may do the opposite a lot of times I kind of do that on purpose sometimes at least I don't know but even though you know there's a part of me at least there's a part of me that's like crazy like I try to be orderly, I try to be alphabetical, I try to be chronological, I try to be very geeky, very nerdy, because I want order, but even, you know, it's like, there's a big part of me that's like, chaotic. Episode 8, so, he's with Karen, but then he's having an affair with Beck for the longest time, and, 
and they then they're, they're having sex with each other again, kind of thing, and they can't like get their their hands off each other, and like they always say never again, never again, but like they're emotionally and physically attracted, and maybe not real love, and they're all like they're very young, and they don't really understand what I got. So like, what's love? What's love got to do with it? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. But they get back together. Like, eventually, he goes He goes back to Karen. I mean, to Cynthia. Because, you know, I got black friends on, like, Roy Merrick, who's probably black. But I'll tell you what. So he goes back to Karen. He breaks up. And she's not out about that. And she moves away. And that affects the the boy. Because she was helping out with the boy and the, the mother. with the, getting Getting, like, getting rid of that crazy guy. Joe is trying his best to mentor the boy. The boy wants to get out of the bad situation. Especially now that the problem is uh, bad. Uh, the situation is is worse now that Karen is gone. And he, he wants to get a gun or something and, and shoot the other guy. And Joe's trying to give him life advice and be like, Your life is going to be ruined if you do that. You're gonna get a, you're gonna get thrown in prison. And you'll never see your mom again. Meanwhile, Karen just casually goes out of her way, which is not casual at all by definition. Runs into a bank and then like she's like, you know, by the way, you know, Joe has a dirty past, you know, with with the uh, the other girl, and maybe you know she killed the other girl or what happened to the other girl, and you don't know. So. For for the longest time, for like most of all ten episodes, until the very end, it's like you don't know while you're watching this, you don't know what happened to the other girl. Is he dead? Is he not? And so now, you know, after Karen says that, she walks away, and and now Beck doesn't know what to think. Episode nine is called Candace. This is the episode where Beck is trying to figure out who Candace is, and she just runs around. Uh, trying to talk to anybody she can, and so she's investigating her. This is uh, Beck's friend. This is her other friend, and uh, Beck is just going around talking to everybody, trying to figure it out. And there's all these like rumors going around. Maybe Joe killed Candace, and they don't know. Maybe, maybe Joe killed Blake Webb. Maybe he killed Tiffany Gumbo. Maybe he killed Jimmy Williams. Maybe he killed. Fred Red to get his Legos. Maybe he killed Kathy Pine and his little son. Maybe he killed Dietrich. Maybe he killed Lee Pagoda. Maybe he killed McDonald's for stealing his phone. Maybe he killed Q Tiff for the 10,000 videos that they stole. Oh my god. You know, like all these things Joe did, you know. Where's Waldo? Where's Joe? Where's the evidence? It's like Clue. Blue's Clue. Clue. What a good board game. I think it was Susie. I think it was Joe with the gun um, in the living room. A good board game, you know, with the bike. He had the bike and he killed a Kathy. He killed a Kathy. Not the Kathy, but a Kathy. So Caesar's running around trying to figure it out and uh, what happens, you know. Joe's a little angry, he sort of looks like Clark Kent a little bit sometimes, and uh, he's letting her know how he feels, and he ends up showing her some evidence, like, allegedly, that Candace is still alive, that she ran off to, uh, like, Paris or something, and she changed her name, and it's really hard to say whether or not that's true. I mean, while you're watching this, you don't know. Because he could have made that all up because, you know, he does that kind of thing where he's able to pretend to be other people when he takes other people's phones and he can, like, text as them and you don't know. And he can just, like, pretend to be, like, you know, posting pictures, you know, like, oh, I'm here. Hi, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Tiffany. I'm Tiffany. And, and here I am at the circus. See the picture? And you post it on social media and you fool everybody. So, did you know, is he doing that for Candace? And at this moment, you don't know. 
This is a flashback to Candace, who's pretty hot. The little boy told Beck that you can hide stuff in the ceiling, like especially in the bathroom. You know, uh, it's a really good place. Uh, he he said that because that's what Joe said to the boy. And then she's like, oh, really? So she goes in the bathroom and then she puts her hand up there looking in the ceiling and she found the box and it had, you know, like her old phone and uh, her friend's phone and all this other stuff. And she's freaking out and and then he knows, he finds out, so he throws her in the basement of her, of his store. So now it's, she's locked up in the same place where uh, Benzi was. Uh, that was her old boyfriend who Joe ended up killing. This is episode 10. This is a private investigator trying to figure out who killed that one girl, the friend of Beck. I can't remember what her name is. Is it Kitty? Or is it uh, Daisy? Is it... What was it? Joe stabs the guy, kills him. Then he's telling the boy, we can't tell anybody, otherwise, you know, we'd be ruined and nobody would believe us. But he did it because, you know, this guy was going after the boy and it was going to hurt him because he hit the guy with a bat because the boy wanted to kill him and so he's not happy about that. So he's going crazy and... He's like, um, he has connections in law enforcement. And so he's not like a guy you want to mess with. And so Joe stabs him, kills him, gets rid of the body. So there's a lot of back and forth with Joe and Beck. Beck is in the basement in this episode most of the time. She's able to to escape, but then is not able to... Um, get out of the basement because it's locked up there and and see um, see she, she, she wrote she wrote a really good um like book that is basically like the story of her life and it's like based on true events basically kind of but maybe a little bit different but uh he's like she's I don't know if she's trying to love him or not, but Joe ends up killing her uh, because, I mean, I guess there was nothing else he could have done. I'm not really, really happy about it. In, in a lot of ways, I'm not happy about it. But the way that it plays out, it's it's somewhat understandable. Joe kills this girl, this woman, Beck. A young writer who was um, in college. She's probably like 22 or something. And it's pretty devastating. And he was able to publish her book. And he feels somewhat happy about it. So I'm I'm thinking about all this. And I'm thinking about like, like I said earlier. Like I don't know what I... What I feel, um, I feel like I'm watching Dexter in a way, and and Breaking Bad. It feels like Breaking Bad in a way, where you see uh, character development or whatever you want to call it with Walter White, his development as a character becoming bad and more bad, even worse, even badder. Even the baddest ever, like he becomes Eisenberg. Like the de- the development and like the 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 series of of Breaking Bad is epic, and you kind of see that with with Joe in a way. Uh, in some ways, it's not the same. I know apples and oranges, but um, I kind of see that. And and then I'm thinking about thinking about uh, Dexter and his code and how he only like he only wants to kill bad people but that's not really comparable either even though you know Dexter killed a lot of people but it's like he was really good at it so it's like 
Dexter Dexter Morgan who was killing um, only bad people and never mind season A um, that's a little bit different in some ways and on what happened and I made some videos about that season uh, that was right before Dead Wing Dark came along and uh, ruined my life I mean saved me Dead Wing Dark saved me Anyways, uh, so I'm I'm just I'm thinking about I'm thinking about Dexter and I'm thinking about Game of Thrones and I'm thinking about uh, Breaking Bad and they're always like I'm thinking about all these shows and how it relates and uh, I'm thinking about this relationship that Joe and Beck has and I really want it to work like I really wanted to work it didn't work out and I'm not happy about that I know some people are like not happy that he ends up killing back and it makes you wonder what's gonna happen in season two we know what happens well somewhat because at the end candace appears out of nowhere and joe is interested at first because he doesn't know who it is who's coming into his bookstore and it ends up being Candace, which the show talks about in season one, like all the time, almost all the time, every once in a while at least, I'm, it's like hinting at this woman named Candace that Joe was with, and now you see Candace, and then the show ends, and you're like wondering what's going to happen next. So there's a lot of a lot of questions, but uh, I also have questions about. I mean, like, what would you do in Joe's situation, or what would you do in in Beck's situation? And I I definitely go back and forth because I can somewhat agree and disagree with what what they did, both of them. Like I kind of go, I kind of go back and forth uh, when I think about that, and um, I think it's kind of cool, but also kind of scary, kind of devastating. So, uh, what would he do? Was he being uh, too controlling? Yeah, probably. And so, obviously, you know, he was. A, he was an idiot, and he was a control freak, and he shouldn't have, um, he shouldn't have tried to get involved, but I guess, you know, that's what makes the show really interesting. Um, now I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna try to watch season two. I wish me luck. Till next time. Uh, until next time. Unless if you find yourself in a basement. Then you'll be like, Oh no, Joe, let me out of the basement. Please let me out of the basement. I want to get out. I love you, Joe. Please don't get the apartment.